In this video I'll show you how to go from a quick sketch to a weldment model and a cut list so that you're ready to manufacture. So when you create a weldment part, it's much like any other part, you just create it in part mode, but the sketching mode will likely be different. So you can create these parts with a standard 2D sketch, but 3D sketch is much easier, believe it or not, in the long run. Now, if you haven't used 3D sketching, it, things are a little bit different, and you'll end up with a different cursor. You'll notice that the XY located next to the cursor corresponds to this triad. So I'm currently sketching on this plane. If I press tab, it changed the plane. I'm now on the YZ, and if I hit ZX, I'm on the ZX plane. So I'm going to press spacebar, zoom out, and you don't have to do this, but it's good practice to do infinite construction lines about the center. So once those are in place, you'll notice that you have these two little glyphs. You've got along Z, along X. They are key in telling you which way your, um, your lines are going. So looking at my little sketch, I'm going to start off by creating... Um, a set of lines and I'm going to create on the ZX plane so that's correct and I'm just going to freehand sketch a, um, a rectangle. Now it's deliberately out because I'm going to manually tell it which way it should be running. So if I click on the line and hit Z it forces this little glyph to appear and it all helps constrain it. This is obviously out if we X and managing your, um, your relations is absolutely key in 3D sketching. So I'm going to mouse over this, uh, hold down control on this line. This is why these uh, center lines are so useful. Do the same here, control, click, and coincident. Now when I change the length of this, this is blue, unconstrained, it all changes about the center. Uh, so that's really helpful. So let's give this some sizes. So I'm a big fan of using variables so we'll call this uh, outside width we'll give it a depth of uh, a width rather of 950 we'll give this a depth of 475 and this little sigma sign shows that these are all part of in the uh, the global variable list so we can change those at any point so I could change it to a thousand and the thing will resize and it just makes it much easier to make edits to the model at a later point especially when you get different trims involved it makes things a lot easier so we're going to create some more lines we're going to give it some legs now um, we're going to have to change planes I want to be sketching on the YZ plane so I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to do it in a, a bit of a counterintuitive way. I'll hold down shift to force the glyph, the Y direction glyph. But what I'm going to do is click on the vertice there and make it coincident. I'm going to do the same at the other side. I'm not worrying about size or position really yet. Now that one, you'll notice, didn't snap along that Y direction. So I'm going to force it. And then I'm going to constrain it. Um, make it coincident about that point. I'm going to make these two identical in size by clicking the equals relation. And I'm going to make the two base points along X so that when now these are moved, they move in unison. Now you don't have to do this, but it just makes things a lot easier because if I didn't do that, I'd have to dimension this up. I'd have to dimension the bottom up. And I have to do the same on the other side. So that's four dimensions when two could have done. So much for a much cleaner model. And whenever you're creating any sketches in SolidWorks, but particularly in 3D sketches, anything blue is bad. It's unconstrained. It needs to be nailed down. If it's black, then it's a good thing. So we're going to call this rear leg length. And I'm going to give that a height of 910. When it allows me to do it. And both have resized now, but you'll notice we've got a blue vertice at the top and bottom. That's because the thing can still slide. So I'm going to make this a distance of 500 from the bottom here. 
Right, I could do the same on the front, but my design calls for something slightly different. Um, I'm going to just throw in a line from the vertice. And you can see they're along the Y glyph. I'm going to make these two the same length by control clicking each of them. And then I'm going to make them level with this. Um, so that will be along the Z direction. So now that changes the length of this. And this, by the equals relation, changes the length of that. Right, 3D sketch is almost done. I just need to put some supports in. So I'm going to put one across the top. And I'm going to make a deliberate mistake here. I'm going to put one across here. That looks like it's almost there, but let's just turn it model round, and we can see that that was a perspective issue. It looked good, but it's actually on the wrong plane. That's why paying attention to the glyphs is really important. So I can press tab to put it on the YZ plane, but actually if I just force it along each of the um, to each point it will detect that I'm trying to it'll have some idea what I'm trying to achieve and it will put it along the right uh, planes however they might not be perfectly level so we'll force the um, the direction so I'll make that a long X that's a long Z this doesn't look to be long X and that's a long Z so the whole thing there is now in place but it's blue which means it can move up and down. So I'm gonna put that at a height of 150. And I'll put a global variable in called lower brace height. Now I'm gonna create another video in which I will show you how to make your own custom weldment profiles. But for now, I'm just gonna Finish this 3D sketch off by exiting. I'm going to save it and we're going to use an existing um, weldment profile. And if you're not sure what that means, then I will uh, I'll explain now. So weldments is a piece of functionality in SolidWorks that allows you to create uh, structures of uniform cross section usually things like box section, round bar, and in this particular case, it's gonna be a timber structure. Now, timber generally doesn't come as part of the weldment um, structural members, so you can create them yourself, and I'll do that in a separate video. But if you don't see that weldments tab, all you need to do is right click in a space here, choose weldments. Once you have done it, you can hit the structural member, and you can choose from your uh, profile library. Now, as it happens, I've created already something called three by two planed all around. I'm just going to use it as a timber. I'm going to show you how to create the um, the actual structure now. Now, once you've created, chosen the profile, you'll be required to um, select some groups. Now, a group is simply just a set of lines and there's some rules for this. If I choose a line here, they can either be parallel, they can't be sort of on different planes, or they can be in a loop, a continuous loop. So that is a legal um, group, as it were. So I'm going to clear my selection. I'm just going to put in, I'm going to do a, a group for each of my legs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the profile. And you'll notice that these little snap points and just it allows me to position the profile exactly where I want it. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it through 90 degrees and I can mirror it, I can locate, so you can play around with the position and that just makes things a lot easier. So I'm going to go through that process with each of my uprights. And each of these is in a different group because it has a different location setting. You know, and I could have sized the, um, the sketch itself to be, um, to be the correct dimension about the center point, and then I wouldn't have had to do this, but then it wouldn't be much of a tutorial. Also, this is nice for creating automatic trims. So I've got the front of my bench there. 
I'm going to create another new group. And I'm going to position them here. Now, notice that everything automatically trimmed, it resized due to, um, due to the location points that I'd chosen. So that and that are in the same group because they're parallel. We're going to create another new group and do the same on the other side. It's going to be a new group because it has different location settings. You'll get used to the sort of logic of, of this as you create more weldment structures. And that and that are going to be part of the same group. There are different groups there because that's located on the top left. This is located on the top right. Um, I'm going to create another new group for this here, locate it. And then in the same line, this is parallel, I can stick that in there. Final set a new group here, locate profile. Now, it would be sensible to create another new group for this top member here. But I'm deliberately going to leave that out just to show you another method of doing it now. So notice how this structure is all trimmed up nicely. It doesn't look particularly brilliant because I'm using this in a virtualized machine. The thing's all trimmed up. You know, this is cut to the correct length to fit between these two members. So turn my sketch view back on. I'm going to create a new structural member group. And I'm going to select this back bar. And I'm going to position it as before. I'm going to hit OK. Now, because this is a new member, what's happened here is I have a situation where this member actually overlaps the two. And it's an impossible situation. When I create the cut list, this would be effectively six inches too long. It'd be three inch here, three inch here too long. So to rectify this, without just going back and creating a new, uh, a new group. For example, this, this member might be a different section of wood. This might be two by two, or it might be a piece of box section. So there needs to be a way to trim this to size without leaving gaps in the sketch. So this is what the trim entity um, button is for. So I've got a little warning here. I'm gonna press save. Right, so I'm gonna trim extend Bodies to be trimmed is going to be this center member. And the trimming boundaries is going to be the two upright bodies here and here. And it shows you the, um, the actual remaining member. And now under, in more complicated structures where you've got different profiles, you have the ability to keep and discard various elements of it. In this, it's about as simple as you can get here. I'm going to turn weld gap off. We're not actually welding this thing. So, click OK. And it's trimmed to shape now. So I'm going to go back to uh, a graphics view. Although it's not much of a graphics view with my, uh, my setup here. OK, and we've got the basics of a, um, of a bench. So this is the next trick that I'll give you. If you go into the cut list here, what I really strongly recommend that you do is right click and hit properties. And I recommend that you name each of the members a sensible part name because it will help a great deal when you come to doing a drawing and a cut list. So the standard, um, from the standard template, you get these options. You get length, angle, you get the description, which is set from the weldment profile. I'll do that in a separate video. The material, which is set from, usually transferred over from the weldment profile, but can be local to the part. The quantity, so there's two uprights in this case. Total length of cut, so there's um, 8301 there. And we're going to create a new field called part name, and we're going to call them rear upright. I'm going to go through that list in the same manner. So when I click that, these are the front uprights, part name. These are all the same length. So part name, we'll call them cross members. 
or we'll call them main members. We'll call that cross member. And just a little tip, notice I've, I've called these singular, that's rear upright, that's front upright, because when we create the cut list, it will say quantity three of the front upright, not three front uprights. So it's a semantic, but it's something that I find um, annoying if it's not correct. So click OK, everything's good in there. And we've got a basic structure. So we're now gonna create a drawing and cut list for this. So we're gonna go make drawing from part. Now we've got in my particular installation here, just the standard drawing template. Okay, what I'm gonna do is drag some views in. So I'm gonna just, I quite like a diametric view there. Little trick here is we click that, go to use sheet scale. We can force it to use the actual scale of the sheet. I'm going to force this, however, to have a custom scale. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. We'll go, uh, oops, wrong way. Right, let's go one to 20. There we go. If you see all these construction lines over, just turn them off um, under UV settings there. So if I was sufficiently motivated, I could go in and I could create a standard three view of it. However, that's not of interest to me this time. I'm gonna create a cutting list uh, so that I can order the correct timber for the structure. So to do that, what I'm going to do is under annotation, I'm going to create. Now, you would think Wellment cut list is the, the correct way to go. You can do it that way. I have much more success in the bill of materials setting. I'm going to do a bill of materials for this part, but instead of using the standard bill of materials, I have created my own. Okay, I'm using a, a bill of materials from 2018. This is 2016, so it doesn't appear to work. So I have to do it from scratch. So in the standard bill of materials, I'm going to go for flat numbering and a detailed cut list. Um, and we're going to click OK. OK, we'll do it that way. We get the quantity of uh, each component in, uh, in the list. Now, I'm going to add, insert a column to the right, which is the length. And I'm just gonna turn the uh, the length to a single uh, round number because I'm not gonna be cutting these bits of timber to, uh, to any decimals of millimeters. Right, so there we have it. We have a, um, a cut list that I can now take to a timber merchant and have cut exactly to the right size um, for my purposes. So that was a quick overview of the 3D sketch to weldment to cut list process. I'm going to do some more uh, in-depth videos. I'm going to create a playlist. So do subscribe and check out the playlist. But um, if you like these videos, do like, subscribe, comment to let me know what you'd like to know. And stay tuned because I'm going to go into each of these uh, stages in a great deal more detail. So thanks for watching.